In a similar way, a bad habit is a repeated behavior or thought pattern that's been so entrenched that it's really hard to steer myself out mm. of it. And yet what we try to do is we try to just throw willpower at that thinking, I'm just going to try harder. Yeah. And then I fail and I'm like, <laughs> God, I'm so sorry. I promise, I promise, I promise. I'll never do it again. And it's then cycle. we go for a couple yeah. of weeks and we're right back into the cycle again. We have to train to be different. We have to become the kind of people that are no longer interested in whatever that is. Ken, welcome to Praise on TVN. So happy to have you here where we're addressing some of our YouTube audience, most pressing questions related to mental health, spiritual health, emotional health, all of that. This isn't just a question a lot of the YouTube audience has. I think it's just a question a lot of humans have. <laughs> it's a part of being a human being. Right. Why is it so hard to break bad habits and uh, as a follow-up question, can they actually be broken? A, a habit, <laughs> yeah, I'm just thinking of my own bad habits. Yeah. <laughs> a habit is a repeated thought pattern yeah. and behavior, right? So the two go hand in hand. Yeah. Typically, bad habits involve some kind of pleasure. And when pleasure is involved, the brain emits dopamine. And that's why those habits are even more difficult to break because the huh. brain likes pleasure. And so the way to break those bad habits is to go back to what our thinking is. So remember, all behavior has its source in the heart, which is composed of thought, emotion, and will. So our thinking is going to produce the behavior. So if there's a habit that I have that's a bad habit that I want to break, the process isn't to focus on the habit itself because that's not mm. the problem. It is a problem, yeah. but it's not the problem. Yeah, it's not the root of the problem. Exactly. Yeah. So the root of the problem is what's going on in the heart, yeah. specifically what's going on in the thought process because my thoughts are going to influence how I'm feeling and my feelings are going to influence my decisions and then my decisions is going to play itself out yeah. in my behavior. Yeah. And so I think we have to... Uh, reprioritize what we're focusing on when we're talking about breaking bad habits. Because typically what we do is we address the habit and then we have, we have to get accountability so that I won't do that. And when I do that, then I'm going to come tell you about it yeah. and you're going to go, come on, dude, you know, <laughs> you need to get better about this. I know, I know, I'm going to try harder. See, that's the thing is that we get into this trying harder cycle and that always is going to lead us to failure because willpower will only get us so far. Well, and I'm, I'm just, as you're talking, I'm thinking that completely takes away any, um, first of all, addressing the root issue, but secondly, any partnership with the Holy Spirit. Exactly. Which I don't know about you. <laughs> I think I'd be lost without the Holy Absolutely. Spirit. Absolutely. Yes. So how, how should, in, in, a, in a healthy way, how should that partnership look? And, and what does that lead to? So it's as simple as, as thinking about reading scripture, that God's word is an essential tool yeah. in forming our character into the image of Christ. But the Holy Spirit isn't going to open the Bible and do the reading for hmm. us. I have to do that. I have to get down. I have to open my Bible and read. But the Holy Spirit then takes God's word and he affirms and confirms the truth of it in my heart. That's his job. Yeah. So I do my part by reading the word and the Holy Spirit does his job by affirming and confirming the truth of that in, in my heart. So it, and you can apply that to prayer. You can apply that to any, yeah. any of the other spiritual disciplines, if you will, that you want to. The discipline itself doesn't do anything, but it is my part in partnering with the Holy Spirit who then does all the growth and transformation. And I've heard you use the analogy of like a farmer can't make something grow. Right. He can fertilize the soil and he can water it. Uh, but the growth itself, I mean, it reminds me of John 15, that the, the, the we, apart from God, apart from being connected to that vine, can bear no good fruit. Yeah. And Jesus even takes it a step further in John 17, hmm. where he talks about the fact that I am in you and you are in me. I mean, there's this, this intimate, hmm. organic connection where we actually, Paul says, have the mind of Christ. So we can actually think God's thoughts as he has revealed them in scripture, but also as the Holy Spirit then affirms them in our hearts. So it is a, a multifaceted dynamic that involves our part, involves the work of the Spirit, yeah. it involves the truth of God's word. And it's just amazing how when you put all of those together, 
it produces a result that nothing else in and of itself could produce. So what I hear you saying is a key thing with regard to breaking bad habits is to almost unfurl it and see where it originated, yes. where it started. And that that's the thing that needs to be adjusted. Yeah, and even if you can't figure that out, because not everybody's gonna be able to go, well, let's see, hmm, oh, yeah, I know, right? <laughs> we can ask the Lord to search our hearts because yeah. he knows our hearts and reveal whatever that source is. Or we can go to a trusted friend or a spouse or somebody who knows us and say, hey, this is what's happening in my life. Any thoughts? There's the outcome. Yeah. What do we think is maybe causing is, that? Is, is the source. So that's a very different mindset when mm. you start thinking about how do I break bad habits and how do I go about it? Because our typical approach, like I said a, a few minutes ago, is accountability. Accountability does not help you resolve bad habits mm -hmm. because you can ask me something and I can lie to you just as easily if you know as anything else. And so, but if we have a relationship where you're coming alongside and you're encouraging and you're reminding me of who I am in Christ, it's like, Ken, that's not who you are. Yeah. You know, you are seated with Christ in the heavenlies. This is who God says you are. When we start living out of the reality of who we are in Christ, out of our identity, yeah. it's gonna produce an entirely different quality of life. That's funny you say that because that's what I was thinking. I was thinking even you wanting to go to the Lord for help, that's gonna that's gonna hinge on who do you believe him to be? Yes. Who who is he to you? Yes. Uh the the degree to which you've experienced his love or acceptance or grace and even scientifically, the brain can change. Yes. So if you choose to reorient that initial thought, uh over time you can form new grooves in the brain yep. and you're going to have different behaviors and different outcomes. Can you speak a, a tiny bit more to that? Yeah, so think of so thinking is, creates these strong neural pathways, right? Those neurons are firing together and they're creating a stronger pathway. Think of it like this. If you're, if you're driving in Northern Canada and it's in winter and it's, or let's say it's in spring and it's super muddy, as you drive through there, you're going to create these really deep you know, furrows because of your, your wheels. And so the next car that comes through is not going to try to create new ones. They're going to stay in the same ones in the next car, the next car, the next car. So now fast forward, now that mud hardens. And now if you're in that rut, yeah. it's going to be really hard to steer out of it because it's so deep. In a similar way, a bad habit is a repeated behavior or thought pattern that's been so entrenched that it's really hard to steer myself out mm. of it. And yet what we try to do is we try to just throw willpower at that thinking, I'm just going to try harder. Yeah. And then I fail and I'm like, <laughs> God, I'm so sorry. I promise, I promise, I promise. I'll never do it again. And it's then cycle. we go for a couple yeah. of weeks and we're right back into the cycle again. We have to train to be different. We have to become the kind of people that are no longer interested in whatever that is. So let me give you a real quick example. Uh, a number of years ago, I ran the LA Marathon. And I'd never run a marathon before. Uh, it was when I was pastor at church. And so one of uh, the ladies in the church, she had been a, uh, a former runner. She almost made the Olympic team. So oh, wow. Yeah. She'll probably know what to do. So I said, hey, would you help me figure out a routine and everything so that I can run this marathon? She said, absolutely. So she put this training routine together and the whole thing. And I trained for six months. And then I showed up on race day and I ran 26.2 miles. Now I didn't break any records, but I made it. Now, what do you think would have happened if I would have not trained at all and woke up on race day and said to my wife, Susan, hey, honey, I'm going to go up to LA and I'm going to run the LA marathon today. And I'm going to try really hard. I mean, I'm going to put my all into it. How far do you think I would have gone? Probably about as far as I get right now, which is yeah. a couple of steps. Yeah, if you're lucky, <laughs> right? So what happened? It was because now I'm not saying it didn't require effort on my yeah. part and 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 trying, but that wasn't what that wasn't my default. I had become the kind of person because of my training that could run 26.2 mm -hmm. miles. So when we're talking about breaking bad habits, what I think we need to start focusing on is how do I become the kind of person that is no longer interested in that whatever that bad habit yeah. is anymore, and that's where we come back to the Christ formation process, that I am becoming more like Christ and I am pursuing that. And how do we do that? How do we become more like Christ? By being with Jesus, which goes right back to John 15, which is what yeah, you said. The right. more I am with Jesus, the more I'm spending time with him, 
in his word, in prayer, with his people. I'm becoming more like him in his character. That's going to produce a different quality of life that we're referring to as the abundant life. But it's also going to create, I'm, I'm also going to become the kind of person yeah. that is just no longer interested in that stuff anymore. Well, it's interesting because we're kind of coming at it the opposite way. You and I have spoken previously about how undealt with emotional burdens and baggage can be what thwarts yeah. that process. And we're kind of coming about it with bad habits. And right. so you're you're explaining how to break it and what's on the other side if you do. Neuroplasticity can work for you or against you. Mm. It works for us when we're focusing on the truth of God's word, yeah. when we're focusing on the things that will produce a different set of emotions and behaviors. But it can work against us if we're going to focus on the lies of the enemy, distortions of who God is. And so it, 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 it's, it's important that we pay attention to what it is that we are thinking about. Yeah. But I, I love this because it, it gives hope to you and to me and yes. to everyone watching to that. that we don't have to be stuck right. with the same thought patterns, that we can choose to think a different thought and we can get a different outcome. Yep. And I'm, I'm just thinking about people who are watching who may be very much resonating with what we're saying and thinking, that's me and I, I need help getting out of that. My, my truck is in that rut and I need help getting out. Would you pray for people and for us <laughs> as, we, <laughs> as we navigate this? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Let's do that. Lord, it, there's so much hope here, and uh, you have given us everything that we need for life and godliness, and you have given us the power of your Spirit, uh, Lord, so there's no reason why we have to stay stuck. And I pray that, uh, that this time together will give uh, our listeners just great hope. Lord, it gives me hope. I hope it gives Christina hope that you are actively at work, uh, but it does require effort on our part to really be disciplined about our thinking. Thank you that we are not slaves to our thoughts. Thank you for giving us human agency and the ability to actually choose what we're going to think about. But now we have to practice that. We have to apply ourselves to your word. We have to memorize scripture. We have to meditate on scripture. We have to be intentional about this. So Lord, would you give us a greater desire for that? And would you help us as we do apply ourselves to your word? to internalize the truths of those in such a way that we start to experience the reality of the written word in our relationship with you, the living word. And I pray that in Jesus' name, amen. amen. At TBN, our mission is to use every available means to reach as many individuals and families as possible with the life-changing gospel of Jesus Christ. Thank you for helping make the gospel of grace go around the world. Without you, we couldn't do it. God bless you.